Uh, Bill and Ed here. Yeah, we we um, we first met um, at this uh, through mutual friends, um, and uh, we you know we kind of linked up, kind of clicked right away, and um, then we we saw each other at this party um, called the Shit Show, thrown by uh, DC Race Radio. Um, 2012, man. 2012. It's, 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 we're coming yeah. up on 10 years now. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, and um, I'd say shortly after that, you know, we, we vibed really well, and um, we got together. He used to come to, over to my house in Sterling, and um, we just jam out. Um, you know, whatever equipment we had, synthesizers, MIDI controllers, you name it. Um, I, I was just happy to find somebody that I could play music with. Yeah, it's like, I, it's re you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to find people that are, like, interested in making, like, more than just like you know guitar music yeah. uh and, and that's what i had been stuck with not, not that it's a bad thing or anything but like i played in bands and, and like when i started trying to produce electronic music and hip-hop and stuff like that like it was hard to find people to, to jam with so so you know i had all this shit at my house and eddie had stuff at his house and i was like yo we gotta just like get this stuff together and like jam and see what we come up with, you know? Yeah, and up until then, I mean, you know, I, I took a big break, but I, I mean, I've been, you know, making music since I was a kid, you know? I was 16, 17 years old, making hip hop, you know, with the old Dr. Boss drum machine and a rolling oh, synth. Oh, those were awesome. And a four track tape recorder, so. Uh, but I took a hiatus and, you know, meeting up with Billy, you know, kind of rekindled everything. And, you know, I've always, I've always been, you know, into music equipment and, you know, making music, so. We got together. It was just it just clicked, you know. And um, it was funny though. It was like you know, like when when he met me, I was I was spinning like vinyl. I, I, I no, I had already started spinning uh, mixing CDJs uh, when I met him. But like mostly, I just spun vinyl out, and I spun like breaks and house and fucking techno and shit. And uh, you know, along comes Eddie, and he's like, "We're gonna play drum and bass." And I was like, "Yeah, that sounds good. Let's let's fucking make some drum and bass." So. Yeah, one one day at the house of Sterling, I was like, you know what, we should call ourselves Bill and Ed, you know. And from then on, it was on, you know. Um, we we kind of uh, simple we, name. Yeah, just you know, just a couple. Wanted, yeah, we wanted just to keep a couple it, of fucking guys yeah, trying to make trying yeah, to make two, some music in the world. Two blokes around the way, you know. Just uh, we felt we want to keep it simple, keep it short, so people recognize it. And um, you know, from then on, we just we were just so into drum and bass and. We had our own idea of what drum and bass, you know, was and is, and um, a lot of it, you know, uh, our idea of it, really, I think, was influenced by hip hop. You know, um, you could find a lot of elements in, in jungle drum and bass um, that that's deeply rooted in hip hop, and that was easy for us. And um, yeah, yeah, it was just, I mean, we couldn't help it. You know, we couldn't help but put hip hop influences in there, and. Uh, you know, so I mean, that kind of steamrolled, and, and then we got our first uh, release on Elm Imprint uh, called Yardman. And um, I think that's just from then on, we just we knew that's what we wanted to do. So let's backtrack for one second. Like, the reason we actually, the catalyst that kind of started this, this guy, Sean Baldwin, was, I guess he was throwing a party and he, he wanted to do like a uh, yeah. workshop, a production workshop. And like, we had never done anything with each other, like, never. We DJed together, but we'd never produced any music together. And so that's why I went over to his house in Sterling, because it was like, okay, well, if we're going to have a production workshop, let's get together and talk about, you know, what we're going to talk about and show what we're going to show or whatever. And we didn't know shit. I mean, we knew a little, a little bit. We, we, didn't, know, we didn't know like, much. Yeah. Man, I don't think it was enough to be holding a workshop, to be honest with you. The workshop fell through. But we were like, maybe nah, it's our benefit. We, we, you know, we kept getting together and making music because we were like, we're on to something here. So, okay. So fast forward. I think it was what 2015 that we released Yardman. Yeah, 2014, 2015 was our first. Either 2014 or 15, I can't remember. And which it, one. It, I mean, it did pretty well. Um, I mean, looking back on it, you know, compared to what we're doing now, it's just, it's it doesn't stack up. But at the same time, it's still kind of cool to go back and listen to it and and. Um, you know, it's, it's served its purpose. I, I still like it. Yeah, it's, it's I, I still was a good. pretty cool it's release. Just, uh, you know, you know the uh, comparison of what we're doing now is a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we've we've also had since then, you know, what seven years to, to produce together. So, you know, a lot of things change. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, like we're, we're 
that's that's how that's how the Bill and Ed project started. Where we're going, um, trying to get under management, trying to get a you know an agent uh, to handle some things for all those us. artist agencies out there. We're looking, so <laughs> if y'all are looking, we're looking as well. What you? Contact us. Yeah. <laughs> Have your people call our people. Have By your people, our people call I mean our people. Um, we got a lot of releases uh, set to, to release this year. We're working on a lot more projects than we've, you know, we've got releases so far for this year uh, as far as what's scheduled. Um, but we're working on uh, some of the releases that we can say, I guess. Um, uh, we've got a Tribe Dub EP coming out uh, sometime in late summer. Um, we've got a uh, track on Deep in the Jungle coming out soon. Not going to say too much about that one, but uh, you'll see it when you see it. It's coming soon. This has played uh, on um, BBC Manchester, right? Mm -hmm. We yeah. have, yeah. Yeah, with, uh, with the one uh, uh, Simon. S man, yeah, S man, DJ S man. Yeah, he was he was kind enough to uh, host us on a show, and that was so much fun. Uh, we did a little little interview at the end there. You can catch that on SoundCloud on our page. That is on our page. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. check that out. Um, we also got to play uh, Origin UK while we were over there. That was another very cool show. Uh, got to play Rough Tempo. We're gonna play Rough Tempo um, this time when we go back to the UK. Uh, we've got a show on Rough Tempo so far, and a show on Cool London. Yeah. Which shout out to Pablo. Shout out to Pabs. <laughs> Who were some of your like influences? Who were the, the people that you know from the past and from the present that inspire your music and inspire you guys? So is, is this just anybody like? I mean, anybody like what what like artists? What music like influences what you make uh, in the the Bill and Ed project? Do you want to go first? Yeah, I mean, you know, kind of stepping back, you know, the the the, the original you know influences for me were were hip hop producers. Um, you know, Alchemist was is probably one of the top ones. DJ Premier, um, RZA. You know, I was a I was a big woo head back in the day. Um, Tribe Called Quest. I mean, a lot of those of those hip hop acts kind of forged you know the, my path in making music. Um, but you know, my, the first jungle tune I've ever heard was uh, you know This Is L.A. from Lemon D, and that kind of you know, steered my interest into D&B and Jungle. Um, you know, Dillinger, if we're gonna go drum and bass, I mean, that's probably, if I would have to say, drum and bass wise, what would be my most biggest influence as far as production, it would, it would probably be Dillinger. But, you know, it's just so, so many. A lot, a lot of them stem from hip hop again, you know, Billy. Uh, well, I, like, been listening to music for a very long time, but like focused on uh, music, I think throughout my life um, as not only just like, you know, playing instruments in school band, but like, you know, like I had a record collection when I was five, you know, and, and, and I just built on it. And, um, you know, I grew up listening to like Johnny Cash and Kiss and, and John Cougar Mellencamp and Meatloaf and, and Leonard Skinner and you know the list goes on. Uh, Pink Floyd, um, King Crimson, The Who. Uh, my parents were too young to be uh, hippies, I guess. Um, you know they they missed the whole '60s thing, uh, but they were like like, like post hippie, you know '70s child love childs or whatever, uh, and. My dad played in a band. He, he was a rock and roll guy. I played guitar in a band, so, you know, I had all of their records, um, and, you know, loved all that shit religiously. Uh, and then I found hip hop in like '84, '85, and just lost my mind. I was like, wow, that's that's amazing. Uh, so so that's that's influenced my life uh, as far as like. Artists go. I remember hearing like 
Jay Rue the Damage the first time, Come Clean, that's a classic. Uh, first time I heard LL Cool J, uh, first time I heard Run DMC, um, the Beastie Boys, you know, like those were our, like, uh, the thing, like those were the artists that like got me into hip hop. I was at that age uh, when all that stuff was popping off. Um, moved to Florida in like '94 to join the Navy, which was incredibly dumb. Uh, and that's where I got introduced to the rave scene, though, uh, in Orlando, Florida. So a lot of breaks, um, house. There, I, you know, there were drum and bass parties, but I didn't know about them at the time. Uh, so actually like, I ended up taking that influence from like 94 to 96 and like spinning house and techno and stuff for years, years, probably up right up until I met Eddie. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, my, my early D and B influences, I would say were like, um, DJ Hive, uh, DB, um, AK-1200, uh, fuck, who else? Um, Diesel Boy, um, you know, just like mostly like American guys because it's like the only thing that I was really hearing at the time. Um, but, you know. I guess what it's been yeah. like eight years since we started playing together. So since then, yeah, a lot. I've, of I've tried to immerse myself in like you know like uh, like we have a collection of older records. I try to listen to them from time to time just to you know, go back to that style and, and, and gather from that for ideas to make new stuff. So yeah, I mean a, a lot of um, you know a lot of the liquid that we make, and I mean even jungle drum and bass like comes from you know soul you know, Motown, R&B stuff too. I mean, yeah, too. Uh, you'll, you'll hear a lot in our music, um, what we call vibes. And uh, it's, you know, it's this, 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 this vibey, you know, melodic. You can't describe vibes with vibey. Right, <laughs> Vi vibey, <laughs> vibesy. Um, but you know, it kind of lulls you to sleep a little bit and then boom, it hits you on the drop. So uh, I, 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 one of our friends told us one time that like our, our tunes were we had our own style because they were very musical a lot of more elements than just like this the drums in the low end um and, and that's true like we try to put like you know a lot of keys and saxophones and you know other instruments that you know not even just a, not even in a liquid tune but you know yeah, we made because yeah. I, I don't know sax gets used a lot. We've we've, we've been yeah we we've been told I, and I took this as a, I took this as a compliment. You know, we we make songs and and not tunes. You know, and uh, or at least we we strive to do that. Sometimes <laughs> you know sometimes it's just that you know punch you in the face banger that you want to that you want to make. You know, yeah, but, and sometimes it's got a ridiculous amount of layers and elements. Yeah. me to send her stuff I sent her stuff she said great I'm gonna listen to it I've got a lot of stuff to do today but I'll hit you back that night she did so maybe she didn't like it maybe you guys just gotta move to the UK yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah man pretty much I guess actually the, this conversation leads nicely into my next question and uh, that is uh, what is it like to be drawn base uh, producers in the DMV producers uh, not so bad. I mean, there's not a there's not a ton of, of competition. I don't think. Uh, I wouldn't think of anybody. As yeah, like other writers as D competition. Yeah, DJing on the other hand, it's it's a little tough because you know that is tough. Yeah, although you know we have a great drum and bass scene in the DMV. Um, we also it, I think it's more overshadowed by the other genres. You know, um, you know, EDM just in general has just been you know, so widely popular in this area. And, you know, as far as residencies that you see, you know, they're, they're usually house, uh, you know, techno, some breaks, uh, but it's, it's, it's been tough to try to separate yourself from, from that. And, you know, drum and bass was, at least back in the day, was always in, in the side room, you know? And I feel like 
that's kind of where our genre sits, kind of in the side room. Now there's exceptions, obviously, um, you know, but as far as being local DJs, it's, um, it hasn't been easy, you know, but um, we, we're, we're, we're still pushing and uh, we're not stopping anytime soon. And um, yeah. I think that uh, it's interesting that more and more people are like uh, producing um, in this area now and, and, or people that were like doing something else that were like playing in a band or are now like producing uh, in some way, shape or form, whether yeah. it be house or breaks or drum bass or whatever. We actually got a project going, another collab going with uh, Scott Donovan from Bunk Buddha. Yeah. Um, that's a drum and bass project that's fucking sounding sweet. So I, I think it's great uh, the more producers come out of the woodwork and, and want to collab and work with each other and like kind of define this area's sound, I suppose, you yeah. know? I, I, I look forward to that, that's good. But I mean, overall, this area is amazing, like for, for music talent. I mean, we've, we've got some A plus DJs out there um, and, and you know, EDM producers as well. I mean, it's, it's no, no short of great talent out there. Um, yeah, shit, just the local guys alone. Are but but Billy's insane. right, Billy's right. I think the, the, the drum and bass production has stepped up a little bit um, in, the, in the local area, you know, and, and that's nice to see because, you know, we need more of that. Not, not competition wise, but just, um, just visibility a, wise. Yeah, you know, Breed just visibility and, and, and uh, you know, I, I think it kind of, feeds creativity to have more people it raises the bar it does know? raise the bar yeah yeah which is yeah, nice yeah, everyone everyone holds each other to a little bit higher standard yeah all right so let's uh let's get into um you know what's happening with your uh latest festival booking um you know dreamscape Tell dreamscape me, like, yeah what are your plans for your set of dreamscape you know what things are you hyped about playing uh dreamscape for? well first of all i mean we this is our f uh, the first time we've had the pleasure of playing at ramblewood so we're extremely stoked about that in fuck general. yeah man um you know thank you yeah, nicole yeah, thank you raul yeah, shout out shout Love out to you. nicole shout out to raul shout out to the whole team there um but you know we've we've never we've never been attendees and we've never played um but everything we've seen everything we've heard um it just it just seems like an amazing place to play um and we're we're stoked because our goal is always play in front of as many people as we possibly can absolutely and absolutely. festivals really really work out well yeah yeah that, they work know? out well for that you know we got to we got a good stage to play on, and uh, we got a good time slot, and we're gonna have some merch. Yeah. Um, so about that. we're really friggin' excited. Uh, as far as what we're gonna play, man, I uh, wanna have it be like some summertime vibe shit, you know? Like, it, it's. Some poolside vibes. Yeah, yeah, some 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 of that shit. So um, yeah, uh, so we are gonna be playing some of our originals, um, some stuff that's on upcoming releases, and some stuff that's still just on dub. Um, gonna go from everything from some jungle to some funky liquid to probably some more you know heavy roller stuff, heavy. Heavy bass, heavy rollers. Yeah, but I mean, we, we definitely want to try to hit that summertime vibe. Definitely got to hit know? the summertime vibe. Yeah. So what's like a, an example of uh, some summertime vibes? Uh... Uh, you can actually find that on our SoundCloud called Summertime. Uh, we did a remix of Summertime, Will Smith and DJ Jazzy Jeff. Yeah, Very that's summertime. definitely getting played. Yeah, that's a great example. <laughs> Move. 
No, Mac G's not. She's oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to make sure I'm not like yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. up, uh, you know, the uh, phase two uh, lineup announcement. So, Mackie G, I'm definitely excited to see. Um, Craze, obviously, duh. Uh, I, and all my local heads. Yeah. Andrew, uh, DJ Am. Yeah, shout uh, out to DJ Am. The infamous. The infamous. Um, I'm interested in seeing my buddy uh, from Virginia Beach come up. Um, fucking uh, filthy casual, filthy casual, baby. Shout out filthy casual. Shout out filthy casual. Yeah, well, I mean we haven't seen him in a long time. Friends, so he's coming you up know, to hang up. Mark Taylor, we Mark Taylor, villain. Such a quality act that Mark Taylor. Can't forget Render Juan. Uh, you know, uh, Hoju Pockets. Shout out to Jake Pockets. Yes, uh, our homie out in Seattle. Old friend, uh, be good. Old old Johnny, Chungle. Yeah, man. Chungle is coming. I, I'm excited to see Chungle. Yeah, it's all, it's always nice to see Chungle. I mean, like again, the the area is chock full of talent. And, oh, uh, Rusco. And Rusco. I'm excited to see Rusco. Yeah, do Rusko. Would, do you think that Rusco will play some DMB? I hope he does. I'm hoping. I so. hope he does. Yeah. Cuz I like when Musco plays DMV. Yeah. I, you know, I have That's fun. Nothing against dubstep, you know. Nothing. Nothing at all. But you got to, you know. But my heart sings drum and bass, so it, my uh, heart I, beats 175. Yeah, that's right. So hopefully hopefully that pans out. Yeah. Uh but yeah, again, you know, the local lineup is is great. Uh headline is great and we're waiting for that phase 2 uh to drop, so can't wait to can't wait to see what happens. Yeah, we don't know who else we're looking forward to yet. <laughs> well, so, uh, do you guys have uh, maybe a sneak peek of uh, a fresh new track um, that you know, think you might be featuring your Dreamscape? Uh? Yeah, yeah. Yes, we, we do. Yeah, we do. Yes, we do. Mm. And uh, let's uh, let's fire let's fire the old beat machine up, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> the beat making machine. All right. So this one is called Don Dada. Um, some of you might recognize the samples. It's from the movie <sighs> Belly. Um, it's. Uh, it's one of my Dust. favorite little gangster gangster movies uh, back in the day with uh, DMX and Nas uh, and all those cats. Method Man. Uh, Method Man. Um, this is one. Of, it's actually. I rolled dolo what's, from state What's to funny state. about this is this is probably the third or fourth iteration of this tune, which sounds completely different other than the samples. I made uh, the original tune probably five years, four or five years ago. Um, and that really never panned out. Um, and I also lost it. <laughs> you lost for, a lot of for, shit. For, for, for other stories that I can't really mention now. But um, yeah, so this one is called Don Dada. Uh, it's unreleased currently. Bring it up on the, on the big one. And um, yeah, and it goes a little something like this. Absolutely, our pleasure, well, uh, man. Thank you for uh, yeah. coming by the studio. Absolutely. Definitely yeah, a pleasure to have you. And uh, yeah, big shout out to Good Vibes. Definitely a big shout out to yeah, Good State Vibes. State of the rave. You guys are doing it, doing it big. Really yeah. appreciate what you guys so, are doing. Such a cool idea um, and, and a good concept. And I hope that it like continues to take off and, and pick up for you. This, big this really shout cool. out to uh, my beautiful girlfriend Amber McCann. I love her very much. You can uh, catch all of our music on wherever you get your music. Uh, it's also streaming on Spotify. Uh, you can buy it on Juno Download, iTunes Music, uh, Amazon Music, uh, Beatport. So um, if 
you're, check it, check us out. Yeah, if you're interested in what just, we do, just keep your eye out on on new stuff Feel coming to too. We got a lot of new stuff coming, a lot of new stuff. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. Uh, shout out to my wife who's upstairs right now watching the Kardashians. Love you. <laughs>